Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall, your guide as we embark on a journey through a dark labyrinth of horror. But do not be afraid. I will be with you every terrifying minute. Together we will probe a ghostly shroud of mystery that thus far has concealed a horrible murder. I assure you, you will be in no danger. All that you see and hear takes place in your imagination. You cannot lose your life. You can only lose your mind. Our mystery drama, Brain Drain, was written especially for the Radio Mystery Theater by Ralph Goodman and stars Paul Hecht. It is sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Have you... Most tales of terror begin just before a gruesome murder is about to take place. Our story begins after the fact. Space scientist Carl von Linden is already dead. His murder, if it was murder, was neither unusual nor gruesome. But there were strange circumstances surrounding his sudden and unexplained demise. Investigating these circumstances is Charles Carey, a government agent assigned by his superiors at the Bureau to make a routine check of the situation. With him at the dead man's apartment is his assistant, Henry Boggs. What they are about to discover is anything but routine. Here we are, Lieutenant. Uh -huh. I believe this was Von Linden's apartment number 17. Yep. I've been here many times, Boggs. Under more pleasant circumstances. You and he were good friends. His death must have come as quite a shock to you. I was such a young man. Just turned 30. One of the most promising scientists the department has ever known. Open the door, Boggs. you have the keys? Right, sir. Well, the rooms are rather large. Comfortably furnished. Yep. Von Linden and I spent many evenings here trying to outguess each other's moves on that chess set. What did he talk about? Oh, everything. Anything. Except those top secret experiments he was conducting. He was always open, friendly, easy to talk to. That is, until last week when he returned from Cairo. Cairo? Well, then these must be the souvenirs of the trip. Excellent photos of the pyramid. Yeah, yeah, he showed them to me. There's one picture there that still baffles me, though. Which one? Yeah, this one, uh, here. Now, Von Linden standing at the entrance of the large pyramid. You see, look, he's standing uh -huh. at uh, one side, looking to his left, smiling, uh -huh. as though he was being photographed with someone else. But, but there's no one else in the photo. Huh? Well, now that you mention it, that is rather strange. Did you ever ask him about it? No, no. He didn't seem to want to talk about that trip. There was this girl, uh, Tara, I believe her name was, a young woman with a strange hypnotic quality. He was glad to return home to escape her spell. Well, you don't think this this Tara could have had any connection with his death? Uh, that's not likely. She was in Egypt when he died. She called him just before he had that uh, fatal stroke. No, unless there's some way you can kill a man through hypnotic suggestion, we'll have to rule Tara out as a suspect. Here, have a look at her. Among these photos? No, 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 on this easel. There's a painting Von Linden made from memory when those uh, nightmares began. Nightmares? Yeah. Look at this face, huh? Hard to believe someone as beautiful as this could give you nightmares. Oh, fascinating green eyes. Even more startling when contrasted with raven black hair. Hmm. Who was she, Boggs? <laughs> Mr. Warren. The, the Pentagon call? Yes, I'll take it now. Hello. Yes, General. I know. Carl Van Linden was an extremely gifted scientist. Uh, no, no, I'm completely satisfied that the death was the result of perfectly natural causes. Yes, come in. Uh, what you've heard, General, are just rumors. 
Yes, I see. Well, the Bureau will make that decision. Goodbye. Meddling old fool. Oh, I'm sorry, Lieutenant Carroll. Oh, that's, that's all right, Inspector. No, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm here to give you as much trouble as the general. Oh, about what? The death of Carl von Linden. Oh, look, Carrie, I know von Linden was a close friend of yours. But there's no mystery here. I've been going over your file. You've done an amazing job for the Bureau, and we're grateful. Inspector. I've also noticed you hadn't had a day off since last November. <laughs> Are you suggesting I take a vacation? Oh, there's nothing unusual here. Many men in their prime overwork... Buckle up under accumulated pressure, keel over, quite suddenly, as your friend Von Linden did. Inspector, I saw a young man in perfect physical health keel over, as you say, but it wasn't from overwork or accumulated pressure. Harry. I think I understand. Someone somewhere in this bureau has decided that an investigation might produce results that could be damaging. The decision to close this case was mine, mine alone. Now, why don't you start that vacation, I suggest you? Well, if you say so, sir. Good. Then why not start by coming to my home tonight? I'm giving a small dinner to introduce a young lady I've been seeing. <laughs> Someone I'm rather serious about. Oh, uh, well, if you don't mind, I... Oh, you have a date? Fine, bring her. <laughs> uh, I'm sure Tara would love to meet her. Tara? Well, you heard me mention her before. No, I mean, yeah, yeah I, I guess so. <laughs> There'd be no other reason the name would sound familiar to me. Yes. Well, then you will be there. Eight o'clock? Ah, uh, yes, yes, Inspector. Yeah, I'll be there. I get that, Charles. Ah, Carrie. Ah, Inspector. Come in. I'm so glad you could come. Thank you. My guests are out on the patio. Here, let me take your coat. Ah, thanks. <laughs> I imagine you're anxious to meet Tara, the young woman I told you about. Yeah, yeah, very. <laughs> uh, she's quite a bit younger than I am. I, I don't know her age, really. Her beauty seems timeless, and I find her fascinating. Well, you've been a bachelor all your life. I'm sure she must be fascinating. You'll find her exactly as I described her to you. Oh, you never did. Uh, uh, I beg your pardon? Describe her. But if I may, let me. I mean, let me describe her to you. Well, how can you? You've never met her. Well, I'd still like to try. You, uh, you say she's fascinating. Yes. Therefore, her eyes are probably, uh, cat-like in quality. I'd say they were, uh, green, uh, emerald green. Well, go on. And since her beauty, as you put it, is timeless, she has the translucent Egyptian skin tone, pale by comparison to most women, uh, milk white. Her hair, black, raven black. Bravo! An amazing deduction. I've been standing here in the shadows, and yet this handsome young man has given an intimate description of me. Tara, well, do come in, Tara. <laughs> I'd like you to meet our new bureau expert on extrasensory perception, James Carey. Oh, <laughs> fascinated, Mr. Carey. Uh, no more than I, Miss... Um... Just Tara. Call me Tara. Everyone does. Everyone? Oh, now, don't be jealous, darling. Carrie, uh, Carrie, isn't he the young agent you were telling me about? The uh, friend of that gifted scientist who had that unfortunate heart attack? Oh, my sympathies, Mr. Carey. It was a great personal loss. I understand. And yet the dead are gone. What purpose would it serve to exhume the body and perform an autopsy? You told her of my request for an autopsy, sir? Well, uh, we were discussing the incident briefly. We have no secrets. Well... If we're going to have silly bureau talk, I I'll return to our guests. I was amused, Mr. Carey, when I entered the room, but if you insist on being intense... No, 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 Tara. Control that temper of yours. Don't leave. I was just trying to explain. Yes, yes, stay, Tara. As a favor to me. Oh. Dr. Kadar, forgive the outburst. I, I, I did not know you had arrived. I am sure you did not mean to be impolite. Uh, Mr. Carey, Inspector Warren, this is an old and dear friend of mine, Dr. Stefan Kadar. Ah, welcome to my home, Doctor. I don't believe Tara has mentioned you before. I have been away on a journey. To the Middle East, Doctor? Why do you say that? Oh, well, the souvenir you wear around your neck. The silver pendant engraved with hieroglyphics, that sapphire set in the center, is an ancient Egyptian cat's eye, is it not? 
You are quite observant, Mr. Carey. Well, Mr. Carey here is one of my staff of government investigators. Investigating what, if I may ask? Oh, nothing. At the moment, Doctor. I'm here as a guest, as you are. But I do find that pendant unusual, almost hypnotic. Can't seem to take my eyes off it. Really? He's right. It is fascinating. It is getting rather late. I merely stopped by to extend my best wishes. Uh, by the way, Mr. Carey, what time do you have? Huh? What time? Oh, uh, that's uh, 4, 4 15. 4 15 in the evening, sir? Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm afraid my, my watch has stopped. Has it? I suggest you check his watch, Inspector. Mr. Carey seems confused. Yes, of course. It has stopped. No, no, wait a minute. Good Lord, it's starting again. The hands are, are spinning. Five, six, seven, seven thirty. It's now exactly at the right time to the second. Oh, darling, don't look so amazed. I should have warned you. Dr. Kadar is an unusual man with unusual powers. Yes, I'll bet. Mr. Carey is a source of exceedingly hostile vibrations. It is obvious he has little knowledge of the power of the mind. Oh, you're wrong, Doctor. Just before you arrived, he performed an amazing feat of mental telepathy. He had never met Tara before. And yet, without a single clue from me, he was able to describe her exactly. Not nearly as impressive as your magnetic power. Magnetic? How do you determine my power is magnetic? To increase the forward speed of a watch, one would have to move metallic wheels and gears at an accelerated speed. To accomplish this, one would need uh, electric or magnetic power. Ah, clever, Mr. Carey, but entirely too logical. Uh, how would you say this is done? I have no idea. Have you, Carey? No, I don't. Well, forgive my little prank. Uh, Tara, my child, you have my blessing. Thank you, Kadar. I knew you would approve. And now I must bid you good night. Allow me to see you to the door, Doctor. Terry, escort Tara to the patio. I'll join you both there later. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Well, they're gone. And now? Now, Mr. Carey? Aren't you going to suggest a walk in the garden? <laughs> you amaze me, Mr. Carey. You are not only a master of extrasensory perception, but a mind reader as well. If we leave by that door, we won't be seen. Coming? I'm not sure. Afraid? Uh, of what I can see, hear, and touch? No. Take my hand. It is real, is it not? Alive, warm. Who are you, Tara? Did my friend Carl von Linden ever truly know... I know of no Carl von Linden. There is a painting in his apartment, a portrait of a face he has seen many times in a dream. Oh, surely not me. Perhaps not. <laughs> but one thing I do know for sure, the death of von Linden was an unnatural occurrence. I promise you his murder will not go unpunished. And those who have done the devil's bidding will spend an eternity in hell. <laughs> We have a determined investigator in Lieutenant Charles Carey. Tara seems innocent enough, and yet her resemblance to the portrait in von Linden's apartment is too remarkable to be coincidence. Inspector Warren's fascination for the young woman could prove to be a stumbling block, unless Carey can come up with cold, hard evidence linking his suspicions to fact. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. Three days have passed since the untimely death of gifted space scientist Carl von Linden. The night Lieutenant Carey met the beautiful, fascinating Tara, he returned home, troubled, unable to sleep. That unforgettable face the same face that haunted his friend Von Linden now haunts the dark recesses of his mind. Try as he might, 
he cannot shake off the persistent ghostly image. Early the next morning, he and his assistant, Boggs, continue their investigation. I'll bet it was quite a shock to find that Tara is now Inspector Warren's playmate. How did she get here so quickly from Egypt? Did you say Von Linden spoke to her by telephone that night before he collapsed? Yeah, it could have been a fake call made by someone else or pre-taped by Tara. The possibilities are numerous. Oh? Uh-huh. Do they include flying across the ocean at supersonic speeds <laughs> or, shall we say, on a witch's brew? <laughs> <laughs> Not likely. All right, let's start with a file. See what you can dig up on a man named Kadar, Stefan Kadar. Who's he? A man I met at the party. Calls himself Dr. Kadar. Tall, wiry, high cheekbones, white hair. An older man? How old would you say? Sure, he looked ancient. And yet he moved like a young athlete in his early 20s. You think he's mixed up in Von Linden's death? I have a feeling there's a connection. Tara and this Dr. Kadar? Yeah, yeah. They seem strangely close. I I got the impression she's afraid of him. I'm going to stop off at Inspector Warren's office, make one last attempt to get his okay for that autopsy. That would help. I'll see what you can find on Kadar. I'll meet you at the inspector's office in uh, one hour. Gotcha. Oh, and uh, Carrie. Yeah? From what you've told me, someone out there doesn't want any further digging into this affair. So be careful. Inspector Warren speaking. Oh, it's you, darling. No, you're not interrupting anything. Lieutenant Carey? No. As far as I know, he's on vacation. Those were my orders. The Von Linden case has been officially closed. Why are you so concerned, darling? A conflict between me and Carey? No. He and I are still good friends. It's just that he has a personal interest in this one. And he can be stubborn. That, darling, don't worry. I won't upset myself and I won't overwork. <laughs> darling, someone's at the door. Yes, yes. See you tomorrow night. Goodbye. Boggs, what are you doing here? Looking for Lieutenant Carey, sir. Isn't he here? Here? No, he's on vacation. Oh, yes, that. Well, he's still disturbed about the Von Linden matter. He said he'd stop by to see you again about that autopsy. He was headed over here an hour ago. Well, that's strange. You're sure he was coming here, Boggs? Positive. He's anxious to exhume Von Linden's body, have it checked out at the lab. I told him that was out of the question. Well, you know how he is. Yes, I know. That's why I'm concerned about his not arriving here. When did you say he left? Over an hour ago. Well, he may have changed his mind. I made myself very clear. There's to be no further investigation, no exhuming of bodies, no autopsies. The case is closed. Yes, I know, but... I'm busy, Boggs, if you don't mind. Yeah, but I have a feeling something has happened to the lieutenant. Nonsense. He's always punctual. And he distinctly said I was to meet him here in an hour. For what purpose? I don't know. But he was definite about his instructions. And I tell you, he hasn't been here. Now, I don't want any more about Lieutenant Carey or about the death of Von Linden. The investigation is over and the case is closed. The inspector is right, Boggs. Carey. Where have you been, Lieutenant? Walking. Reconsidering. The case. No need. No need for further investigation. I have been mistaken. Well, I'm glad to see you finally come to your senses, Carey. Come to his senses, sir. Look at him. He's lost all sense of time or reality. Look, look, look at his eyes. Empty. Glazed. Lieutenant Carey has been drugged. How do you feel now, Lieutenant? I, I'm better. Still a little shaky. Uh, the inspector's with the doctor. Uh-huh. You had a rough time for a while. Yeah, my head sure feels like it. Can you remember anything? Anything that might give us a lead on how you came to be in this condition? Well, I do remember leaving the office, uh, heading for the elevator. On the way, some somebody uh, somebody I haven't seen before so said there was a call for me in Major Carlson's office. He's been transferred, you remember, to uh, Rhodesia. So I, I picked up the phone, and a voice, there was a, a voice that was so familiar, it, it said, uh... Yes? Don't press so hard, Carrie. 
It'll come to you in an hour completely dropped out of my life. Not to mention the six hours following. What did the doctor say, Inspector? You'll be all right. There's no official conclusion on what actually happened to him. The lab reports all look normal. Normal. All because we're checking out a death that the Bureau refuses to classify as a murder case. Perhaps I have been a bit stubborn about this. At first, things did look normal. But now, I just don't know. You can find out. How? Okay, that autopsy. Uh, you talk me into this, Carrie. There better be some evidence coming out of this ghoulish matter of digging up a fresh corpse. Uh, uh, they've raised the coffin, Inspector. Yep. All right, man, uh, step to one side, huh? The coffin's intact. What now? This is your show, Carrie. Do you want it moved to the morgue for the autopsy? Uh, yeah, in a minute. Well, why the delay? I thought you were eager for the report. I am. But with your permission, I'd like them to open the coffin first. Open it here? That's right. Carrie, you've been seeing too many horror movies. Exactly what's to be gained by... Uh, all right, all right. Gentlemen, if you please, open the coffin. Good Lord. It's empty. Exactly. But who? How? Save the questions, Boggs. I think it's time we track down some answers. Our case is once again officially open. After two days of digging into the files, we don't seem to be any further along than we were before. Nothing on Kadar? Not a thing. The man just doesn't exist. Well, perhaps he doesn't. What? Strange creatures, Kadar and Tara. One seems able to travel at the speed of light, be in two places at once, here in Egypt, and the other, Dr. Kadar, untraceable. Vanishes into thin air after making a mysterious appearance at the inspector's house. Uh, have you spoken to the inspector about this? No, oh, he's so taken with the beautiful Tara, I'm sure he won't listen to reason. Even if we had some facts to reason with. Well, what exactly do we have? Well, Carl von Linden met with foul play, or else his body would not have been removed from that coffin. Jack? And a theory, only a theory, mind you, but the murder of von Linden is part of a pattern. A brain drain that began six months ago, according to some checking I've been doing on my own. Brain drains? Yeah, a series of unexplained deaths of talented scientists. Deaths that have taken place in various parts of the world. I, I don't follow. Uh... Here are these clippings from the files of the international press. Possibilities I had expected have turned out to be facts. Which are? Fact number one, Von Linden. American space scientist dies suddenly, cause unknown, and his body vanishes mysteriously. Well, that's true. Fact that we... number two, reported in this newspaper from Leningrad. Ivan Salkovich, Russian scientist, drowned in the Baltic Sea. Body never recovered. Fact number three, Pierre Chamois. Working on top secret biochemical experiments in Paris, trapped in a laboratory fire of unknown origin. Body never found, or never acknowledged to have been found by the French government. Well, that's fascinating, but I fail to see the in link. In each of what... newspaper, there is a mention of a theatrical performance being given that week by a psychic, um, a mentalist, if you will, in the same city where each tragedy has occurred. And his name? Dr. Kadar. Kadar. What's the next step, sir? We're going to follow the trail that's warmest, Boggs. We're going back to that grave site. There's the entrance to the graveyard, sir. Yeah. Right up ahead. You got your flashlight? Yeah. Uh, storm is brewing. It's getting dark. I have it right here, sir. Uh, I'll move on ahead. Just follow me. Right. Can you see all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Fine, fine, fine. Wish I could say the same. Graveyards are uh, not exactly to my taste. Uh, keep your eyes peeled for that gravesite. Yeah. Uh, I believe it's up ahead, uh, just to your left, huh? Just just beyond that large crypt. Yeah, yeah, the gravesite should be directly ahead now. Here it is, sir. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. There's the open grave. Well, nothing seems to be changed. What's that? The door, sir. To that large crypt. Oh, yeah. It's loose on its hinges, swinging in the wind. Oh, it startled me for a moment. 
Hey, hold the light on the ground here. Huh? What's this? Huh? What? A silver pendant. It was half buried here in, in the soft earth. I've seen that before. Those ancient Egyptian symbols. The cat's eye. It belongs to Dr. Kadar. Are you sure? Positive. He was wearing it when I met him. I remember. I remember looking into it, feeling strange. Somewhat hypnotized. Yeah, it does seem to have that quality. Turn away, Lieutenant. I feel controlled by a sort of supernatural presence. Look. Look. That strange ectoplasmic form. There, alongside the open grave. Well, I, I, I don't see anything, sir. It's moving. It's moving towards the crypt. We've got to follow it, Boggs. There's something there. Something the apparition wants us to see. There's nothing there. Come back, Lieutenant. Come back! <laughs> Yes, the mother is a fragile thing. And when it is under pressure, it has been known to conjure up strange, frightening illusions. Did Lieutenant Carey actually see something hovering over the open grave? What strange force has taken control of his will? What lies waiting in that ominous crypt? We'll find out more about this deadly situation when I return shortly with Act Three. (laughs) Lieutenant Carey's murder investigation has succeeded only too well. It now looks like it may also succeed in adding the names of both Carrie and Boggs to the list of unfortunate souls who have suddenly vanished. The sound you hear is a bubbling brown liquid from which emanates a shower of multicolored sparks. Giant electric coils slither up toward a mirrored ceiling which is about to reflect an unspeakable evil. We are in a secret underground laboratory located directly up... I've said enough. I am merely your guide. You must complete the journey yourself. Mr. Carey. Mr. Carey. You can't wake up now. Uh, What? Mr. Carey. Uh, Dr. Kadar. Precisely. I'm flattered you remember me. You are most kind, particularly for returning my pendant. For that favor, I have spared your life and the life of your equally annoying and meddling friend, Mr. Boggs. Boggs? Where where is Boggs? Where is he? Lying right beside you, Mr. Carey. Asleep as you were but a few moments ago. I assure you, he is all right. Wake him. Come on, bring him around as you did me. Certainly, as a show of good faith. Here, here is my silver pendant. If you will merely press the eye to his forehead. He looks so pale. Boggs. Boggs, are you all right? Uh, yes, Lieutenant, I, I think so. Uh, where are we? In an underground lab of some sort. Quite correct. Still in the graveyard, gentlemen, directly under the crypt. You both descended the hidden stairs inside the tomb at my bidding. I think it is time I let you in on my little secret and put an end to your curiosity. Who are you? Why have you brought us here? Please, Lieutenant, don't don't ask any more questions. I just smell the air. Acrid fumes. That's an acid of some sort bubbling in those tanks. Aha, you are right, Mr. Carey. Uh, But uh, they are not for you. Those tanks are much too small to encompass a full-grown man. If you will look more closely, you will see they're merely the size of your head. Uh, Besides, they are already filled. Filled? With what? That... Gentlemen, is my secret. If you will both follow me to this electronic panel, I use it as a control board. 
Corporal, to control what? Uh, this way, if you please. As a friend of Dr. Carl von Linden, you will be interested in what I have to show you. Von Linden? Yes. And Pierre Chamois. And Professor Salkovich as well. Are you implying that these three acid tanks have something to do with the three men who have been murdered? Murdered? That's strong word, Mr. Carey. I have murdered no one. The men I have made reference to are still alive. Alive? Von Linden, Chamois, and Salkovich alive? In a medical sense, yes. When a man drowns or is horribly burned in a mysterious holocaust or merely collapses from sudden increase in heart rate, he is not necessarily dead. His body may be rigid, completely immobile, as these three you see here in this hermetically sealed glass case. Von Linden. And the other two must be Chamois and Salkovich. But as long as the brain continues to function medically, a man is still alive. These three gruesome corpses alive? Come, gentlemen, you are looking in the wrong direction. Here are von Linden, Chamois, and Salkovich. Here, in these bubbling tanks, each containing one magnificent specimen of a superior brain. A living brain, if you will, kept alive by me. You go. Careful, Boggs. He's got his hand on that control. I... Ah. Electric charge. He's not. No, 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 no. Just stand. He will be all right. But uh, that was rather foolish. But where did that bolt of power come from? That? Oh, that was through the courtesy of Mr. Chamois. I merely pressed this button to activate his brain and direct the power surge. Mr. Chamois did the rest. Unbelievable. Yes. Considering only one brain was activated. Imagine, if you will, the deadly destruction that would ensue if all three were activated at once. What? What hit me? Uh, Brainwave, Boggs, from one of those tanks, the one containing the brain of Mr. Chamois. I suggest you do not try anything foolish. I do not wish to harm you, gentlemen. As I told you, I am not a murderer, merely a man of science devoted to organic and biochemical experiments. Yeah, you mean like the one you conducted in France. The explosive gas, one that causes laboratories to go up in flames? One of my minor efforts. Actually, it's a refinement of the ancient Egyptian fire. The container need not be cumbersome. A small, lead-encased perfume vial set to go off at the precise moment. Yeah, we already know the way it worked on Professor Chamois. Uh, the poor fool. He was too in love with my beautiful Tara. Her perfume spray left in his coat pocket. <laughs> Tara has been most helpful. She has brought me three magnificent specimens. But brains without bodies? I have no need for bodies, Mr. Carey. I have accomplished my objective. Superior brain power. A living, thinking power. Celebrating at my command. It is I who control them. And with them, I now have the power to build or destroy. As I wish it. When I wish it. Where I wish it. I will admit that little experiment you just demonstrated was impressive. For a minor achievement. Minor achievement? Oh, come now. I've seen more exciting electrical displays at our own local Museum of Science and Industry. Haven't you, Boggs? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, oh, much more exciting, sir. I see. You're testing me, are you, Mr. Carey? Trying to discover just what sort of power I have under my control. If it is excitement you want, gentlemen, I will be most happy to oblige with a little help from my friends. Professor Salkovich! A shower of white hot sparks, if you please. Blocking the door in case our visitors decide to make hasty exit in the middle of this hall. 
Good Lord. Will you look at that? Keep back. Keep back, Bob. Now you, Dr. Von Linden, a little sharp laser beam, blue liquid fire, separating our two guests. All them prisoners, it stays on side of the roof. Ah, watch it, Bob. Jeez, that was too close for comfort. And now, once again, I call on you, my good someone. Repeat your fast performance. Strike Mr. Box with a kinetic bolt of current. This time, increasing the power to killing a crazy... No, no, wait. Stop, stop. You've proven your point. Dr. Kadar, we've seen enough. I hear you, Mr. Carey. And so it seems of Salkovich, Samoa, and Von Linden. The electrical display, as you put it, is over. I must admit, that was... That was really something. Thank you. It has not been easy to develop this violence. These men are peaceful by nature. At times they resist and are not easy to control. You mean you shock them? That's how you control them? With embedded heated electrodes. They have no love for me, my three professors, but they obey. And soon I will have more, more corpses. More brain. And that's where Tara comes in. Yes. Most beautiful child. But like most beautiful women, she has an insatiable need for power. Which you provide. But why has she bestowed her gifts on Inspector Warren, huh? Inspector Warren was not chosen for his brain, but for his social contacts in your space program. He... Has had his uses. Had? At this very moment, Tara is placing a small vial in his coat pocket. The incendiary charge is set to go off at midnight, and she's safely out of range of the deadly Egyptian fire. And the newspapers will report another unfortunate accident. Exactly. It is just past 11.30. Ah, you're not thinking of anything heroic. Right now, are you, Mr. Carey? No. No, I was thinking about your three captive professors, how they must hate you. Hate me? Yeah, well, they must know what you have done to them, how you torture them, and for what purpose. What if they were to make a concerted effort to fight back? How much damage do you think they could do? The thought is too fearful to contemplate. But what if they try, Doctor, and succeed in wresting control from you? It's impossible. I am in full control. Well, then there is no harm in my urging them on, is there? Child, do you hear me? Join forces with your tortured colleagues. Combine your mental powers. Rid yourselves of this madman once and for all. Ah, stop, stop. You are confusing No, I don't think so, Doctor. I think they know exactly what they are doing. The beam, the laser beam, not your forehead, and stop, stop, please. Coming that we can be stored. Yes, that's it, Carl. One surge of power. Destroy it all and you're free. Ah, I'm the fire. I'm the fire. The fire, sir. They're all exploding. Run for it, Bob. Run for it or we'll never get out of here alive. I can't believe it, Lieutenant. That chamber of horrors, it was like a nightmare. Keep your eyes on the road, Boggs. Getting close to midnight. Yeah. Ah, there's the house up ahead. Quick, pull into the driveway. Yes, sir. And there's Tara, just coming out on the porch. We made it. Yeah. Inspector Warren is yeah. with us. Okay, turn your lights off. We'll move in slowly. All right, sir. Isn't likely that hidden vial will go off while she's still with us. Well, I wouldn't bet on it. A madman like the late Dr. Kadar was capable of anything. Okay, stay in the shadows. <laughs> You've really been a delightful guest, darling. But really, you mustn't stay any longer. I'd never bear to leave you. But it's almost midnight. I'd love for you to stay, but... Would you, Tara? Mary. And Boggs. What are you two doing here? I'll explain in a minute, Inspector. Give me your coat. My coat? Yeah, no, that won't be necessary. Yeah, I found what I want here in your pocket. Tara's perfume vial. You're mistaken, Mr. Carey. That vial is not mine. Oh, but it is, darling. I recognize the same place. Step back. What are you doing? I'm going to throw this vial as far as I can across the highway into that open field. Good Lord. What was 
him. He didn't say he. <laughs> Seven, Katie. What chemical could cause that explosion? We'll never know, sir. We'll never know. They say Inspector Warren was quite devastated at the thought that his sweet, innocent Tara was fooling around behind his back. But you'll be happy to know he's forgiven her and sees her regularly, every Sunday, on Visitor's Day at the State Correctional Institution. I'll be back shortly. Most crime stories have a message. Ours do not. They are offered as pure entertainment. But for those who insist on a message, we offer you a choice of two. For the good guys, we have a word of caution. When it comes to a romantic liaison with a beautiful woman, look before you leap. It could be a matter of love or death. And to the bad guys, a word of advice from Oscar Wilde, who warns, murder is always a mistake. One should never do anything one cannot discuss after dinner. Our cast included Paul Hecht, Robert Dryden, Stotts Cotsworth, and Carol Titel. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Carrier Air Conditioning. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.